Section 6.5, Assessing Normality. In the previous sections of this chapter, we looked at normal distributions and we used area underneath normal curves to find relative frequencies and probabilities for those distributions. In this section, we're going to look at the concept of how do you decide if you are working with a normally distributed population or a normally distributed random variable. And we're going to do that by looking at the sample and from the sample try and gain clues to see what we can decide. Our first method of making the decision about is our population normal or not is going to be to look at a histogram. And if the histogram is roughly bell-shaped, then we'll be able to conclude that there's a reasonable possibility that the sample was taken from a normal population. But if the histogram is not at least roughly bell-shaped, then we would conclude the sample did not come from a normal population. So let's look at a couple examples. In this first one, a histogram is given to help us assess the normality of a random sample of size 1,912 and it's taken from an unknown population. So based on the histogram, what do we conclude about the normality of that population? Well, when I look at this histogram, it seems like it is roughly bell-shaped. Not perfectly bell-shaped, but roughly. We don't have perfect symmetry and maybe our tails aren't exactly the same length, but we have to remember this is just a random sample and in a random sample there's some random variation. We're trying to decide what the shape of the population is and we're just looking at the sample to help make that decision. Alright, so let me go ahead and write out that decision. Because our histogram is roughly bell-shaped, we can conclude that there's a reasonable possibility the sample was taken from a normal population. So I think it's important for you to notice that I didn't say because I have a bell-shaped histogram for my sample that I know I have a normally distributed population. I'm only saying that that's a reasonable possibility. We can't know for sure what shape population we have based on our sample. But if it looks kind of bell-shaped, then bell shape is still in the running for what that could be. As opposed to our next example, so let's go ahead and look at that where we have a histogram that is given to assess the normality for a random sample of size 73. It's also taken from an un unknown population, and based on the histogram, they want us to conclude, to decide what we conclude about the normality of the population. And this time, when I look at the sample, it doesn't look really bell-shaped at all. My peak is two bars from the left. I have several bars over out to the right tail, so there seems to be a big imbalance there. That imbalance to me seems like it's probably too big to just be the result of random variation. So because this doesn't look roughly bell-shaped to me, I would conclude that the population is not bell-shaped. I don't know what the population is for sure. Maybe it's right-skewed, severely right-skewed, but it doesn't seem bell-shaped because the peak is too far off from the center, the tails are too out of balance. So because the histogram is not roughly bell-shaped, I'm going to conclude that the sample did not come from a normal population.
So notice the difference between those two answers. When you have a rough bell shape, then maybe the population is normally distributed. So we can't be certain that the population is bell-shaped even if we have a bell shape in our sample. But if the sample produces something that doesn't look like it's bell-shaped at all, then we can conclude that the population is not normal. We still don't know exactly what it is, but we can tell what it's not. And that's fairly common with a, using samples to make decisions. You can never be certain that something is a certain way, but sometimes you can see enough information to see that it definitely is not a certain way. So if it looks bell-shaped, it might be a normal population. If it doesn't look bell-shaped at all, then it's probably not a normal population. So here's the procedure that I was using to answer both of those. Let's go ahead and fill that in. The, the steps below can be used to attempt to decide whether or not sample data that you have collected was drawn from a normally distributed population. The first step would be to create a histogram for the sample. It would be nice if that was done for us already or if we could use technology like StatCrunch or Minitab to get it done faster. And if the histogram is not at least roughly bell-shaped, then we should conclude that the sample did not come from a normal population. So that was like the example we just finished. And then, similar to the one up top, if the histogram is roughly bell-shaped, then you conclude that there's a reasonable possibility the sample was taken from a normal population. The most common mistake that I see students making on this type of problem is if their histogram is roughly bell-shaped, then they say the, the population is normal. But notice we have a much kind of softer statement than that. We're saying there's a reasonable possibility that that population is normal, not that we know it is. So if it doesn't look bell-shaped, it's okay to say it's not a normal population. But if it looks bell-shaped, that doesn't mean for sure it is. It's just a reasonable possibility that it is. So be careful with your wording there. Okay, so the histogram method is okay for trying to assess normality, but it's not the best. And so here's a, a few warnings about things that can go wrong or things we should worry about when we're using histograms. One of them has to do with if the sample size is small. So if the sample size is small, the histogram might not have enough data for a clear shape to emerge. With small samples, random, vari random variation also has a large effect on the graph. But with a small sample, and so for very small samples, the histogram will almost never present a clear bell shape. So if you think about what if your sample size was only 10 pieces of data? Could you really stack up 10 pieces of data and have it come out bell-shaped? I would think that's not enough data to form some such a complicated shape. So for really small samples, the histogram will almost never present a clear bell shape, and this can cause us to conclude that the population is not normally distributed, even in cases when the population is actually normally distributed. So random variation has a kind of can have a big effect with somewhat small samples and then with really small samples it's basically impossible to get that bell shaped and you're going to get a lot of um, false conclusions where you say the population is not bell shaped when it truly was. So those are some warnings about histograms. So because of those problems another method has emerged that um, can be a little better than the visual one. It's called the p-value method. So let's take a look at that. The p-value method is another option and it uses technology to compare our sample data to an ideal sample of the same size that's taken from the standard normal distribution. And our random sample will probably never look exactly like an ideal sample from a normal distribution, so we're going to see some differences between our data and what we think ideally normal data should look like. When we see these differences between our data and the normal data, we have two possible conclusions. Maybe our sample um, did not come from a normal population, and that's why we see the differences we do. Another possibility is maybe our sample really did come from a normal population, but it just doesn't quite look the same due to random variation. So we do have to remember we're not looking at the population data. We're just looking at sample data, which is subject to this random variation effect, which can cause something that really is bell-shaped to look a little different than that. 
So the p-value is the probability that if our sample really did come from a normal population, that we would have seen differences at least as big as we observe between our data and the ideal normal sample of the same size. So basically the way we're going to make this decision is going to be like when we look at histograms the way we do it is we say if it's a big difference from a normal shape or a bell shape then we're going to conclude that the population is not normal. If it was just a small difference we'd say it could be random variation. But how much difference from bell shape is allowed depends on the sample size. It also could vary from one person to another. This p-value method is going to measure it as a probability that we would see such big differences and we're going to use that probability to help us to decide is it reasonable, is it just random variation or should we throw that out and decide it's not normal. So let's look at the steps on that procedure to see how that's going to work. So this is the procedure and conclusions for using the p-value method. If the p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05 then we're going to conclude that the sample did not come from a normal population. Our data looks too different from an ideal normal sample for the differences to reasonably just be random variation. Essentially what the p-value is telling us there is that there's less than a 5% chance that if we had normal data it would have looked this different. So it's basically telling us the differences are too big for random variation to be a reasonable explanation for it. So then we go with, well, it's probably that it's not a normal population. The other way this can happen is if the p-value is greater than 0.05, this is the other outcome, and then we would conclude that there's a reasonable possibility that the sample was taken from a normal population. Basically we're saying that our data looks enough like an ideal normal sample for the differences to reasonably just be random variation. And when we say that it's reasonable that it could just be random variation, that's actually coming from the p-value because the p-value is saying if our data was really bell-shaped there would be more than a 5% chance of seeing differences like this. So the differences don't seem that strange for normal data. A warning has to come with the p-value method as well. The p-value method cannot prove that our sample was taken from a normally distributed population. So even though this is a more numerical version and has kind of a cut and try rule based on is it bigger or smaller than the 0.05, uh, we still have to look at this and say notice that we don't say if it's greater than 0.05 the population is normal, we just say it's a reasonable possibility. So when your p-value is larger than 0.05, it just means there's a reasonable possibility that your sample came from a normal, normally distributed population. So again, be careful with the wording. There's never a case in this assessment of normality that we're doing where we can say, we looked at this and that and the other thing, and now we know that this population is normal. Sometimes we can say we're confident it's not normal, and then at other times we can say it looks like a reasonable possibility that it's normal. Never are we seeing enough information to prove that it is normal. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a couple examples that are using this p-value method, and we'll have the histogram here too, so we can kind of look at both of them together. So a histogram and a p-value are given below to help assess the normality of a random sample of size 67 taken from an unknown population. Based on the p-value, what do you conclude about the normality of the population and explain? So I'm going to look at the p-value, which is given in the chart right here, and I'm going to always compare that to 0 0.05. So in this case, my p-value is 0 0.9535, and that is greater than 0 0.05. So in that case, we're going to conclude that there is a reasonable possibility the sample was taken from a normal population.
So that's our conclusion, but just thinking about it and explaining that a little bit more, what we're saying with the p-value is if our population really did come from a normal population, there would be a really good chance of seeing um, the differences between the way our sample data looks and the way ideally normal distribution would have looked. So we can kind of think about that in this histogram. So this histogram is not perfectly bell-shaped and it's not perfectly symmetric. We'd probably like this bar to drop down to match the one on the other side and have things kind of taper out more evenly. But the p-value is saying there's a really good chance that even if your population was normal, you'd still see these sort of distortions in the shape just due to random variation. That doesn't prove that it is normal, but it's saying there's a good chance that a normal uh, a data from a normal population would look this way, so it's a reasonable possibility this came from a normal population. Let's go ahead and look at another example, this one with a little bit of an application to it. So the histogram and p-value below represent the base, the, uh, the base annual salaries for a random sample of 73 Major League Baseball players from the 2014 season. So based on the histogram, what do you conclude about the normality of the population? So there's around 700 or so baseball players, I believe, in the league, and we have a sample here of about 10% of them, 73 per, uh, major league baseball players. So we're not looking at all of them, but they're asking us, what do you think the shape is for all of them, and specifically, do you think it could be a normal shape? So when I look at this histogram, to me, this looks like there's no way this um, sample came from a bell-shaped population. The peak is not near the center, and it's all the way at the edge, with just the tail going off to one side. So the p-value agrees with that because the p-value is being listed as less than 0 0.0001. And that's the computer's way of saying that to four digits, it's essentially 0000. zero, zero, zero. So our p-value is essentially coming out at nothing, which is definitely less than or equal to 0 0.05, in which case we're supposed to conclude that the sample did not come from a population. So essentially, on this problem, we're trying to give this data set the benefit of the doubt and say maybe it came from a normally distributed population and it looks like the sample looks like this just due to random variation. But the p-value is stepping in and saying essentially no way. The probability of seeing something look like this if it really came from a normal population is essentially zero. This just looks too different from bell-shaped for it to... Um, be reasonable possibility that the population is bell-shaped. So in this case we are convinced the sample did not come from a normal population. And I happen to have seen this whole population and it looks an awful lot like this random sample and I would say it tends to be more of a right exponential peak on the left side with most Major League Baseball players making near the low end of the salary but some kind of outliers and you know kind of our all-stars making a lot of money over here but that's not the most common. Thing that happens. So that wraps up section 6.5.